1967, three newly independent African nations, Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda, came together to form the East African Community. The creation of the EAC was a bold move towards regional integration with the hopes of strengthening their economies and promoting peace and unity in the region. The expectations were high, with Kenya, the economic powerhouse of the region, Tanzania's vast natural resources, and Uganda's strategic location, the ESC was destined for greatness. But despite the initial optimism and high expectations, the ESC was short-lived. In just 10 years, the community collapsed, with member states going their separate ways. Unfortunately, the ESC just didn't quite reach its full potential, and its downfall was a real setback for the East African region's hopes for better integration. Let's get into the story of the birth, rise and fall of the first East African community. The British colonial government in East Africa began laying the groundwork for what would eventually become the East African community in the 1920s. The British authorities saw the potential for greater collaboration between their three East African colonial possessions. As a result, they began building the necessary infrastructure and institutions to achieve this goal. Before the creation of the East African community, several organizations were formed to encourage cooperation and integration between the three territories. One of the first organizations was the East African Currency Board, which was established in 1919 to manage a common currency for the territories. Two decades later, in 1948, the East African High Commission was set up to coordinate activities in areas such as education, health, and transport. During the early 1960s, there were a lot of change happening in East Africa. The British began considering granting independence to their colonial territories as nationalist movements were gaining momentum throughout Africa. Finally, on June 6, 1967, shortly after gaining independence from the British rule, Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya, Milton Obote of Uganda and Julius Nyerere of Tanzania met the Kapala to sign the Treaty for East African Cooperation. This treaty marked the establishment of the East African community, which came into effect on December 1st of the same year. At the time, this treaty was one of the most comprehensive and far-reaching attempts at regional integration. The EAC member states were keen to promote regional development and growth, so they signed several agreements aimed at fostering regional integration. The East African Common Market Protocol, signed in 1967, was one of the most important agreements. It aimed to establish a common market among the member states, allowing for free movement of goods, services, capital, and labor. The protocol also called for harmonization of economic policies and the removal of the non-tariff trade barriers, creating a level playing field for businesses operating in the region. Along with this protocol, other agreements were signed to promote cooperation in transportation, communication, and infrastructure development. However, with the rise of a charismatic military officer by the name of Idi Amin, the ESC would now face a serious hurdle. The members of the Uganda Army and Air Force decided to take over from the civilian role, role, role. In 1967, Idi Amin was appointed as commander of the Ugandan Armed Forces by President Milton Obote. Nyerere and Kenyatta were unhappy with Obote's decision because they believed that Amin could destabilize the region. On January 25, 1971, their worst fear came to pass. While Obote was at the Commonwealth Summit in Singapore, a military coup led by Idi Amin ousted Obote and his government. President Nyerere and the now deposed President of Uganda shared a close relationship due to their mutual support for socialist leaning policies. As a result, when Idi Amin came to power in Uganda, President Nyerere refused to recognize the new regime and provided Obote and many of his supporters with exile in Tanzania. This decision marked the beginning of a bitter dispute between the two leaders. In September of 1972, around 1,000 armed supporters of Obote entered southern Uganda from northwestern Tanzania and advanced on Kampala with the implicit backing of the Tanzanian president. In response, Amin ordered the bombing of towns in Tanzania situated near the border. Although Nyerere's military advisers urged him to reciprocate, 
he chose to settle the conflict through a settlement broken by the president of Somalia, Siad Bare. The outcome of the negotiations was the Five Point Mogadishu Agreement, signed by both Tanzania and Uganda on October 5, 1972. The agreement called for the withdrawal of troops to a distance of 10 kilometers from the border and the cessation of support for forces hostile to the Alves regime. Despite the agreement signing, tension between the two leaders persisted. Nyerere refused to share a platform with Amin and in 1975 declined to attend the OAU summit held in Kampala as he was disgusted by the Ugandan president's brutal regime. But the EAC would also have another headache to deal with. Kenya's president, Jomo Kenyatta, argued that his country was the most economically advanced in the region and therefore deserved a greater role in the decision-making organs of the EAC. Kenya's push for greater representation in the key organs of the EAC was met with resistance from other member countries. Tanzania in particular voiced opposition to Kenya's request, suspecting Kenya of seeking to exert its dominance over the organization. President Judith Nyerere of Tanzania argued that the EAC should uphold the principle of equality among the member nations, with each having an equal say in the decision-making process. The trade imbalance between Kenya and its East African counterparts was another issue plaguing the EAC. According to data from the IMF, Kenya's exports to Tanzania in 1969 were valued at $55 million, while Tanzania's exports to Kenya were valued at just $26 million. By 1973, Kenya's exports to Tanzania had grown to $101 million, while Tanzania's exports to Kenya were valued only at $35 million. Similarly, Kenya's exports to Uganda were also considerably higher than Uganda's exports to Kenya. This trade imbalance was due in part to Kenya's more advanced industrial base, which allowed it to produce a wider range of goods for export. Kenya's exports to Tanzania and Uganda were dominated by manufactured goods, particularly textiles and processed foods. In contrast, Tanzania and Uganda primarily exported raw materials such as coffee, tea and tobacco. The customs union created under the EAC aimed to promote economic integration by eliminating tariffs and other trade barriers between the member countries. However, this customs union benefited Kenya more than its counterparts, as Kenya had a more diverse economy and a larger manufacturing sector. As a result, the elimination of tariffs meant that Kenyan goods could enter the markets of other member countries more easily. The trade imbalance caused tensions within the ESC as Tanzania and Uganda felt exploited by Kenya. Tanzania implemented import substitution, supported by its president, to reduce reliance on Kenyan imports and develop its own industries. Kenya resisted attempts to limit exports, arguing its economic success relied on openness to trade. In the face of these challenges, the East African community ultimately collapsed in 1977, just over a decade after its founding. The failure of the ESC was a blow to the regional integration efforts in East Africa and a reminder of the challenges that arise when multiple countries attempt to work together towards common goals.